guys, my name is Yo Creek. This is my Halloween special video. I'm in the dark, basically, and I'm gonna read to you. I guess there's five, five, five ghost stories. Um, the first one I it's um it's a popular one here in Portugal um, I've heard this one a couple of times when I was younger um, hope you enjoyed so I'm gonna start so um, humans can lick chew my great-grandmother lived alone in the mountains at her cabin her husband had died so she was all she was there all alone she only had one companion, and that was her loving dog. They both loved each other very much, at the, and the dog loved her and comforted her, comforted her. Every night when she was when when she w went to bed, the dog would lick her hand to let her know that he was there to protect her. One night she had gone to bed, and the dog had licked her like he had done routinely every night since her husband died but this night was different she had woken up in the middle of the night because she heard her dog whimpering she wanted to confront him and let her know she was there for him so she stuck her hand out of her benefit dog gently licked her hand like always she figured it was just cold so she went back to sleep the dog's whimpering had woke her up a second time in the night so she stuck her hand out the dog lit it and she went back to sleep. This happened a third time. And she stuck her hand out. The dog stopped whimpering and came, licked her hand. She stayed awake a few moments afterward and the dog had stopped whimpering. She went back to sleep again. In the morning she woke up and stuck her hand out by the bed but nothing lit her, licked her hand. She thought the dog already awakened and was in front of in the front room. She rolled over and got out of bed and heard it drip, 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 drip. So she walked into the kitchen and turned the handle, the handles on, the sink faucet, but it wasn't dripping. She continued into the bathroom and take, to take a shower. As she walked in, the drips got louder. She turned and looked above the bathroom and screamed. There, hanging from the light of, by his tail, was her loving companion, with this blood dripping into the bathtub. She screamed and began to cry, whipping her eyes and sobbing. She turned around and looked at the mirror. In the mirror, she saw the dog hanging, uh, written on the, the mirror with a finger, in her dog's blood, with drips and streaks hanging down from each letter, were the words, Humans can lick chew. Oh. Wow, the English version is kind of scarier than the Portuguese one. Okay, I'm just gonna scroll down. Fuck, I can't. Okay, um, um, okay, I'm gonna read this one now. So, the graveyard wagger. A group of young girls were having a slumber party one night and began to exchange ghost stories. One girl claimed that the old man who had been buried earlier that week in the graveyard down the street had been buried, buried alive. Oh. She claimed that if you tried, you could hear him still scratching at the lid of his coffin. The, others go the other girls called her bluff and told her that she wouldn't do it. They said she was too afraid to go down there to, gra to the grave that very night. They continued to challenge her and eventually she gave in to her peer pressure, accepted their challenge. Since she was going to go alone, she needed to prove to the others that she was actually followed through with the task. She was supposed to take a proof to the others. Ah, so, sorry. She was supposed to take a stake with her, with her and drive into the ground to the, to the next day the girls would know that she had been to the grave. She, ha she headed to the gravesite stick in hand and never returned. 
The other girls assumed she had chicken out and had just gone home instead. The next morning as they passed the grave they saw her at the old man's grave. She had accidentally stacked her night shirt to the ground and then she tried to run from the grave. She couldn't. She died of fright right on that grave. I already read this one. I'm reading again for you guys. But I didn't understand this one. I actually didn't. Okay. I'm gonna scroll down. Mm. The boy with brass buttons. A young couple were delighted to purchase an old-fashioned house in the Stuyvesant Square section of Philadelphia. They moved into their dream home in the winter of 1889, bringing their six-year-old daughter with him, with them. There was a lot of refurbishing to do, so the little girl tended up to go up to the attic and play where her parents were occupied, while her parents were occupied with the house. It wasn't as bad as it sounds, because the previous owners had converted the attic into a playroom. It even had a fireplace at one point, but it was currently boarded up. Excuse me. After a couple of weeks of hard work, the downstairs rooms were finished. The mother, realizing that she had been neglecting their daughter, attempted to try and spend more time with her now. But the little girl seemed distracted. She kept stealing back up to the attic alone to play. Is this is aspirate and perhaps a little hurt? The child was not resp responsive to her attention. The mother finally asked, "What's so interesting up there that it's in that stuffy room?" "It's the little boy with shiny buttons," the child replied. "He's so much fun to play with." "What little boy?" the mother demanded, wondering if a servant child had showed stood away in the room. She went to investigate, but found the room empty. Let me just scroll down a little bit. Whoa, this one... This one is big. Okay. Mm -hmm. Certainly that her daughter was just being contrary. She urged her husband to dis 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 discipline the child. Had her father's stern voice, the little girl became hysterical. She kept repeating that it was a little boy and he wore a blue jacket with lots of shiny buttons on it. As her father listened, he became more and more curious. Formerly as his human, he realized his daughter was describing a child's sailor suit complete with brass buttons. The girl's father made some inquiries about the Coralies, the family that lived in the house before them. He learned that they come from England bringing their child with them, two boys and a girl. The youngest child, a boy, was born retarded. The neighbors described the young, the youngest boy as a sweet, innocent child, but added that Mr. Cordley was ashamed of him and tried to prevent him from being seen outdoors. That sucks. That's arch. Arch. According to the boy's parents, the neighbors continued, the young boy would often sneak out to the to go down the river. The sir goes on and say that one day he fell and drowned. His body was never recovered, but his cap had been found floating in the river. Shortly after the disappearance, the Cordelis put the house up for sale and leaving Philadelphia dropped out of sight. That's kind of fishy. The former seaman's suspicion were now truly aroused. He accompanied his little daughter to the attic and asked her to show him where the little boy came from. She pointed to the boarded fireplace. Her father called in the workers to open it and then removed the mortar that simmered up a cavity beside the chimney. As the mortar chipped away, the corpse of a small boy was revealed. He was clothed in a little blue sailor jacket with four rows of brass buttons down the front. Further examination revealed that the back of the child's head had been crushed by a violent blow. The little boy was murdered. Oh. That's fucked up. 
That is fucked up. Okay. I'm gonna read. This is gonna be the last one. Uh, because I have, to, I still have things to talk with you. So let's see. The Flying Dutchman. The Flying Dutchman is a legendary cursed ship that was doomed to travel around the Cape of the Good Hope in South Africa for for all eternity. It was made famous of the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. <clears throat> okay. The legend of the Flying Dutchman started in 1641 when a Dutch ship sank off the coast of the Cape of Good Hope. The captain, van der Decken, failed to notice the dark clouds looming in the only when he heard the lockout scream out of in terror. They realized that they had sailed straight to a fierce storm. I'm liking this story. The captain and his crew battled for hours and get out and got and get out of the storm at one stage it looked like they would make it. Then they heard a sickening crutch. The ship had hit treacherous rocks had hit treacherous rocks and began to sink. As the ship plunged down do downwards, Captain Vanderdecken knew that death was approaching. He was not ready to die and screamed out a course. I will run on this escape even if I have to s keep sailing until the end of time. So even today, whenever a storm brews off the Cape of Good Hope, if you look into the eye of the storm, you will able to see the ship and its captain, the Flying Dutchman. The Lenchman goes that the whoever sees that ship will die a terrible death. Many people have claimed to see the Flying Dutchman, including the crew of a German submarine boat during World War II. On 11 July of 1881, the Royal Navy ship, the Bachant, the Bachant was rounding the tip of America when they were confronted with the sight of the Flying Dutchman. The midshipman, a prince who later became King George V, recorded that the lockout man and the officer of the watch had seen the Flying Dutchman and used these words to describe the ship. A strange red light as of, as of a phantom ship all aglow, in the midst of which light the mass, pairs and sails of a bridge 2,000 yards distance stood out of a strong relief. It's pity that the lockout saw the Flying Dutchman for soon after the same trip. He accidentally fell from the mast and died. Fortunately for the English royal family, the young midshipman survived the curse to become the King of England. The Flying Dutchman appeared as a ghost ship in the movie Pirates of the Caribbean. It's also future Featured in the novel Castaways of the Flying Dutchman by Brad and Jacks. This one was kind of good. It, it was. Um, let me see what time is it. Um, I'm not gonna finish. I'm, I just want to talk that. I want to talk with you like here in Portugal. Uh, wait. Here in Portugal, we don't do Halloween as you do there in America, all over the world. Here, only the, um, the little kids, the younger, sometimes dress like scary things. Uh, and we don't, we don't go treat, I, how do you say, trick or treat. Trick or treat. Um, because there's just, we just don't. Um, I actually never try to trick a treat. I would love to trick a treat, but here in Portugal we never do that. Actually, I hope one day I can, but here, here there's nothing like not even to dress like. It's not even usual to dress as something scary in Halloween. Just say Happy Halloween, and that's it. Uh, so I hope you have an app in Halloween back there all over the world. Thanks for all the support of making. Um, thanks for all the support you gave me all this time. It's already been more than one month since I started my channel. That's good. Uh, I got 18 subscribers. I hope it continues to grow. So 
Leave a like if you enjoyed watching. Subscribe to be part of Creed. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.